No. What'd you learn? How easy it is to push them like that. Pretty cool, huh? Yang meridians open the body. Uh, can I use you, Mac? You signed the waiver, right? So what? You signed the waiver, right? Yeah, I did. All right. Okay. <laughs> Now that's on the arm. You saw what happened when I, when I, when I activate the yang points. If I hit, remember the back, the, hit, the sun hits the back. It's a yang meridian. If I just tap his back, see how he wants to open up? But if I tap the front, see how he wants to fold? So the same thing goes on the torso. It goes deep, doesn't it? <laughs> it's weird, <laughs> right? Because all I'm doing is swinging, right? And it's like, oh, okay? So the next drill, we're going to actually borrow uh, from a kata called Naihanchi. Some of you know this kata, some of you do not. But the, uh, this is kind of where, in, in my world, the art of sistema, kyusho jitsu, jujitsu, aiki jujitsu, and eskrima all intersect. The opening move in that kata goes like this. Okay? And then it moves sideways. Okay? Now, to the average person who does that kata, they say I'm stepping over rice patties and I'm blocking, and then I'm elbowing somebody in the chest or whatever. No. Remember, the kata is a code. Kata tells me how I'm being attacked, tells me how I'm going to counter, and what to do if that move doesn't work. So the opening move in the kata goes like this, which means if you were coming at me, wouldn't it be natural? There's a couple ways that people come at you. They either come at you with a fist in your face, a push, finger in the face. That's why some of your, your kata in various, in various systems, they'll start like this. Or they'll start um, like this. Uh, this particular kata, or some start like this. This particular kata starts like this. This represents, on one level, someone coming at me with a push. Either one hand or two hand, it really doesn't matter. So he's coming at me with a push, this way. Right? The original version or the original interpretation I was taught for that move, first of all, it meant nothing. It's the bow. It doesn't mean anything. Horseshit. The minute you move from a natural stance, like this, into anything, the kata's begun. All the bowing movements, they kill people. Okay? But I, we're, this is a G-rated show, so we're not going to kill anybody on stage. But this movement tells me, if, I, if I'm late, see how my hands meet him? I am to touch this pressure point and this pressure point together and move that direction. He's going to fall in line for the hand to be hit. That's one level of application. Anytime you see a form, and most of your, your basic kata will do this, they will turn and they will go this way, and they will do this movement, and then they will go the opposite direction and do this movement. And most people will tell you, I have an opponent here and I have an opponent here. No. What that means is that that movement will work, other hand, on either side of the person who's in front of me. Kata Naihanchi goes here, but it moves sideways. So let's say he's pushing me. <laughs> right? So as he pushes, I can put, go ahead, slow. See this? Watch. When we attack fingers, this is called a palm twist. Okay? In Sistema, we don't give resistance. We just let him go where he wants to go. Right? Small circle works a lot. Um, I'm an eighth uh, uh, brown belt in small circle jiu-jitsu. Small circle works a lot on small joint manipulations. So you'll see a lot of this. So we can take the same movement as he pushes. Notice, at the harder he, and deeper he pushes, the more he stays stuck to me. Weird, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Fingers are sore. <laughs> ah, sorry. But I, so I can also, so this movement means that I am to meet his palms some way. As I meet his palms, I am to bend. Now, if you look at, this is called biomechanical Kyushu Jitsu, by the way. Line, line. Imagine there's a triangle here. We call this line the hypotenuse, right? If all I do is compress the invisible line, okay? So side, side, hypotenuse. And down he goes, right? Now, if he's giving me the forward momentum, slow, he'll go down on his own, okay? 
but I want to do it in such a way that he doesn't know what's happening. So as he pushes, he can't help himself. He just falls. Okay? Now, on the ends of the fingers, this is a fire finger. This is also a fire finger. This is a wood or fire finger. This is a metal finger. If I'm touching metal, this is yin metal right here. What's the easiest way to sh energetically to short the body? Yin and yang, right? Positive, negative. Yin, yin metal, yang metal. Right? So watch here. Now, fire, again, going to, we're changing systems now, but just to show you. Here, fire, metal. If I just touch these, they become you know, fire metal. This is yang fire, yin fire, or yin metal. He goes down faster. <laughs> kind of weird, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Right? So if I understand this, see, look. <laughs> I just want to, I want to see, I want to feel. Yeah. I know. I, I know, know what yeah. it feels like. So all I want you to do is as he pushes you now, I want you to catch palm to palm. And I want you to just create that invisible triangle for now. We'll get more subtle with it, right? And then all I want you to do is find either yang metal or yin metal. Keep it in your cutting board, right? And just bend your knees. And all of a sudden, that point comes to you. <laughs> Come here, Luis. You've been laughing at your friend all day here. It's about time. It's just because I try to move him, and he's really heavy. So as the push comes in here, I catch this. Now, I, I moved. I'm on, on him, I'm on the outside. But what if, it, what if he pushed deeper and I came inside? Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Right? So I can come in this way. I can come this way. But I catch this. I give him something to run into. It's an illusion. There's no support there, but he thinks there is. Because he's trying to brace himself. And as he tries to brace himself, <laughs> and then I pull him this way. OK? But this is a, a, a biomechanical principle called side-side called hypotenuse. Any place where you can create a triangle on the body, you compress the invisible side. You see it? Can you see the triangle? Any, any position you want. Side, side. <laughs> Hypotenuse. <laughs> right? Play with it. That's biomechanical Kyushu Jitsu. Go. <laughs> Okay, there's not enough tension here. So as he's, as he's pressing, mm -hmm. he's not committing to the movement. He's got to be moving me. See? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, I'm not committing because I know what's going to happen next. <laughs> the secret, by the way, guys, a lot of what you're going to see me do, there's an optical illusion going on. Can I use you, Chris? Sure. When I'm playing with things like, when I see, you hear me talk about vectors or vital points or things like that, you will see many times that the guy looks like he's like kind of airborne, right? Like he's moving at a diagonal. That's an illusion. What's really happening is I'm, and you think I'm, I'm moving in that direction. I'm not. The secret to a lot of this stuff is anytime the structure of the body, anytime the structure of the body is distorted, the optimal direction to move is down. OK? It's never, never this. It's never this, but it looks like it because the body's unwinding in space. Anytime you have any distortion in the body, if I just give a little drop, it translates <laughs> into the structure. Oh, right? See how easy? The points come to me. Up, up, up. Up, up, up. By the way, when you do this technique and you want them to get up, you've got to make sure they can move in that direction. <laughs> or it sucks for them. <laughs> right? So, you guys play with the hypotenuse? Yes? Now what I want you to do, 
since you guys seem to want to see a lot of more of this Jedi stuff, or you want to just, you okay? Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm good. <laughs> Here's what I want you to do. Uh, we're going to learn the finger lock. Finger lock, now a lot of jujitsu styles do the finger lock, but they don't do it well. I'm going to piss off a lot of jujitsu people by saying that. <laughs> but they don't do it well, because what they do is they grab that finger and they jam it, kind of like we're doing with the hypotenuse. You guys, have, you guys okay with that one? Did that work out pretty well for you? By the way, the further you can get on the phalanges, the better it works. Right? Wally, had a, Wally had a technique where he would catch the guy here, he would angle, and take, take the elbow outside and just come up like that. That's just a kind of a show-off technique because it's much easier to go that way. See? <clears throat> so, where was I going with this? Oh, finger lock. So, as we get the palm, okay, in that one move to that kata, I could, like I, I got told Steve and he kind of agreed, he could spend 20 years breaking down that opening move to that form. It's all about palm twisting and energetics. So one of the ways that we can do the palm twist from kata naihanshi is, like we started, we can do it systemically, which is here. Systemic, and we'll get into that in the, in the next part of the meetup and they start doing more jujitsu stuff. Systema is all about non-resistance. If he pushes me, I move at the rate and speed that he's aggressing so he never senses where it's at. Right? It's, it tricks your nervous system. Wally J, who was the founder of Small Circle Jiu Jitsu, had a similar concept, but he called it avoid a head on collision of forces. So, in other words, if Chris is pushing at me, I'm not going to go, ah! or I'm not going to go, ah! right? and, and try and wrestle him to the ground. I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to get out of the way. See? Up. But there's another way to do this palm twist and get into the finger lock. You can, what I'm about to show you, you can do on any digit. Okay? I taught small, I, I taught teach six year old kids to put 300 pound guys on the ground. Anybody who does any kind of weapons work, if you're not training finger locks and palm twisting, you have, you're missing out. You're, mi you're working a whole lot harder than you have to. Okay? <laughs> so, on, on the first one, we were here, right? Second one, we were here. Third version, we're here. Now I chop the fingers. As I chop the finger, I'm going to take my little finger and my thumb. Anybody ever played Cowboys and Indians? I'm going to shoot him with my gun. There's my gun, right? Here, two-way action. Pull with the bottom, push with the top. Down he goes. Okay? The other secret is, is I've got to get out of my own way. If I bring him in, he'll only go so far and then he'll get strong again. Proprioceptively, it's because I'm in the line he wants to fall. If all I do is move, <laughs> He'll go in the hole. Okay? There's this weird neurological stuff. So as he's coming at me, I can chop this. Whatever I get, I use. It's the same finger position. Whether I'm on the little finger, whether I'm on the thumb, it does, whether I'm on more than one, it's this movement. So we're going to start from here. You're going to get your partner. Find the index. He's just going to do this like he's, you know, doing that no-no finger at you like your mom used to do, right? You're going to come here, you're going to hook this, and here. Two-way action, pull with the bottom, push with the top, draw your elbow back, and put the gun in your holster. Just put the gun in your holster, okay? And then we'll build on that, okay? Go play. Thank you. Okay. Easy peasy. There's a ballet school next door. Good. Now, where would, I, where would I touch him to take him down? Okay, you wanted to crank his neck, but that was, you were close. So watch again. So just from a structure standpoint, I bring him down, he's down here. See? Oh. So I'm just forming a, a circle. Oh, with my left hand, does it work? Doesn't matter. You can do it this way, yeah. See? Oh my gosh. Now, the secret is, you got halfway there. So I'm here, right? Yeah. Now watch, I put the gun in my holster. Okay. So I'm here. That draws you in, that puts you down. Okay. So what happens if my 
finger break and I'm pretty much well broken. the finger broke if it's broken then I'm gonna hit you <laughs> but the whole idea a lot of this comes from the fact that you're terrified of it breaking most people's fascial fascial connections in their hand are so tight that it's all you see is white you know now some people who are on drugs or things like that, they won't feel the pain so you have to break you, you probably will have to break it and go somewhere else immediately because they will sacrifice a, a special forces person they'll sacrifice the limb to get to you so you've got to use these for what they were for to get to something more vital I could use these to control people do pain compliance if I'm a bouncer or something like that but in the world according to David the best compliance is when he's out cold they don't you know they're pretty much done after that so I'm always finding a way to get to the, to the off switch. <laughs> okay, we got this? Now, you can, let me use Steve. You can use the fingers. You can use the fingers as setup points for your kill shots. When I say kill shots, I mean your finishing points. Okay, so whether I get him left to right, right to left, a right to right in this case. All I have to do is get his structure bent and make him move down. Okay? So as I come in here, if I want him to drop forward, there he is. Right? If I want him to move out, there it is. If he's too far away, <laughs> now we're cha-chaing, right? right? But let's say he does that. Go ahead. Ah! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's called crossed extensor reflex. Neurologically speaking, when this hand's in trouble, that hand turns into a coward. <laughs> and look where I'm at. Right? Where's his head? Say cutting board. You never reach. You let them come to you. Yes. So where does this move lead you? Where are you going with that? Come here. Yeah. Yep, him. <laughs> Don't mean to do it on him. <laughs> so, and again, I'm going to, the reason I'm spending a lot of time with the finger lock is because it's a very easy way to, to just change everything, right? Even these guys who like to grapple. You start playing with fingers, they get really upset, <laughs> right? Against the rules. I, well, a lot of things against the rules. But if I've got the finger lock in a, in a right to right situation here, so I popped him here. Now, depending on, on what his response to that is, that, that may be lights out. That may be over for him, right? The next thing I want to do is I want to put him down. I want to put him, ideally, I want to put him face down. To put him face down, we put him palm down, right? And then we just lay flat. There, thank you. Extend your hand behind you, please. Thank you. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then we, we can do other things. But the whole idea is you want to think, think sit, up, sit up there, John. You want to think of your palm. I call this the joystick technique. Anybody see, ever see these kids playing with those remote control cars? In, in small circle, we have this thing we call creating a base. Many times when they have like rubber nerves or something like that, they'll go to do this move and they'll just, they can stretch their finger all the way back. To, the, to touch their forearm. In order to, to, get, to, to bypass that, what you have to do is you have to take the slack out of the next joint up. So whereas this, this works really well on John, so we're going to have to, does anybody here have like really flexible joints that I can torque? No? OK. So you're the, it's your turn in the barrel, brother. OK. So what's going to happen now is, let's say he does have super flexible joints, right? What I, and I go to do this, and it's not working like it should. What I want to do now is I want to take all the slack out of the next joint up. I'm going to cup it. And now it's worse. Because I've removed the slack in the joint, but I've also, if I know, my, if I know anything about my polarities, yin yang, fire metal. One pressure point causes pain, usually right on the spot. Two pressure points cause the pain to meet between the two points of stimulation. If I touch here, he gets a little bit of juice there. If I touch here, it's a touch nerve, it weakens, the, it weakens the wrist. If I touch them both, I get a different energy, don't I? If I touch three, it magnifies. Okay? So when I do this and I just take the slack out, that hurts. If I do this and I move skin and I lock those nerves in, it's worse. 
But now I've set him up for a KO or whatever. Does that make sense? Um, so where was I going with this anyway? So he's turning to me to open it. So I'm coming in. He's giving me this. He's giving me seventh cranial. I pop him. Now I have to look at his body mechanics. What do I want to do to him? What do I want to do? Ideally, if he's not out, I want him face down. This is going to be the, the most helpless position for him, right? If he's a systema guy, if he knows anything, if he has any kind of sensitivity, he'll try to roll out of it. That's why I want to, I want to punch his ticket as quick as I can, right? Maybe he didn't go down. Maybe he has rubber nerves. Set up. Maybe I'm off that day then I need to move him in such a way that his weapons can't hurt me. So now I've turned in front of his body away, which gives me the xylophone of his spine, the, the, the mandula oblongata, the brain stem. If I need to punch his ticket, I can. He's got a lot more to work. He's got a lot harder job to hurt me back. Also, I haven't lost control of him, because what if he's got friends, right? I can control him. Okay? Very, very easily and still keep an eye on his buddies. Right? That doesn't mean I want to stay here, right? Because it's only a matter of time. This is one of the reasons why we have to thank you. This is one of the reasons why we have to understand the importance of movement and mobility. Okay? Most martial arts are built around what we call a dueling model. Chris? Sure. They're built around you are samurai, I am samurai. Mm. On the count of three, we go, right? It's a dueling model. 20 paces, turn and fire, right? That's not how most of you are going to wind up getting into it, OK? If you go to an MMA gym, maybe. If you go to a boxing match, maybe. Out there on the street, you probably won't, feel, you probably won't see the knife until it's sticking out of you. So that's why in certain other arts that I teach, that's where you start. You start with the knife on you, or practically in you, and learn how to survive, and then fight. And they're very complementary. But the whole idea behind what I'm teaching you here now is, I can use the finger. Anywhere I point the palm, anywhere I point the palm, the body's going to go. Which means, if, I can't, if he's in front of me and I can't get to my nerve, there it is. Right? If I understand more advanced biomechanical Kyushu Jitsu, this is a vector line, shoulder to shoulder. If I drew a laser from point to point and followed it to the ground, I know, it doesn't look like it will work. <laughs> oh, great. So he's here. He's solid, right? Now the line's here. If I move him, he moves real easy that way, but he's not going down. I need to get the vector skewed. Okay? We'll get into that maybe a little later. But if I want to get to my points, now I'm going to give you another point from the front. This is the one you like a lot. Find, your, find the bridge of your nose. Find where the cartilage is. Find where the cartilage meets the bone. All right? Now, if you ever look at a skull, you'll see a little wavy line where that juncture is. Up through that little wavy line, sorry, Matt. I know something's coming. <laughs> Up to that little wavy line are nerves, are cranial nerves. Now, most of us who've been around the martial arts any length of time, we're taught if we want to kill somebody, we take our palm and we drive it up through that no nasal bone and into the brain and he's going to die. Probably not. Okay? If you can hit him hard enough to drive that little bone all the way back there, you're probably going to cave in the front of his skull. Okay? Not really a finesse move. Right? To hurt and attack that part of the body. You must come down and in 45 degrees towards the base of the spine. Okay? This way. So if I, 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 was say, I was trying to say tighten up your nose, but how do you say that, right? But if I do this, that's just, that makes him want to sneeze. It makes his eyes water a little bit, right? If I just do this. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely. I Different, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So combining this, I move him. I get triple warmer. Bang. OK? He's not out yet. Down. Or I'm trying not to, I want you guys to come back. But I take him down this way. Now, Oren. OK? 
If he doesn't, <laughs> I mean, he's Luis. Yeah. I'm using you guys up. I wasn't laughing. I know. <laughs> so I'm here, right? So now he's, he, he's dropped to his knees. I have a choice. I can move him out, right, using the finger. I can move him in using the finger. I can move him down using the finger. I can hold him immobile but activated neurologically using the finger and give him a little tap. <laughs> Pretty wild, huh? Yeah. Okay. The relative position of my body to his will change the energetics of that technique. Now you saw, can you face the camera? I'm, I'm just, <laughs> so I'm here, right? And I just tapped him. Okay, just a little tap. Watch, stand up. You see a difference? Sit, Neil. Just the change in, in relative height can change the energetic polarity of his body. Now that's a few, pay, few, few levels up your pay grade. Bottom line, when I have him here, down and in, across the gristle of the nose towards the spine, even if it doesn't put him out, will at least break the nose, it'll make his eyes water, and it'll do this. It'll put him on his back so you can get away. So what I want you to do now nice and gently, is as he comes in, you can meet it straight on. You can meet it this way. You can meet it this way. And all I want you to do is move him into position to connect the dots. Can you do that? Go play. Was it good? Yeah. yeah. I think everyone needs to experience that because when you see it, it doesn't. Yeah. yeah, when you see it, it's not as effective as when. And it's also the angle. Your angle is yeah. different. Right. Yeah. Oh, standing up. <laughs> the angle. Up. I yeah. think when you were hitting me up yeah. here. All right. You're very welcome. Thank you. mm -hmm. The angle going this way. I thought it was supposed to keep you down. Keep your spine straight, though. Okay. That's one of the big secrets. Is your posture has to be good. Okay. And once it's like that, then you... Yeah? Oh, if you don't? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should teach you guys how to revive before we go any further. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> nice! Very nice. She's vicious, man. You see she... Now, all she would have had to do, man, was just... Wham! Over! I know, I had to coax him into doing it with me. You gotta, you gotta watch out what you teach your girlfriends, man, because they will, yeah. they will not hold back on your ass. To you, it's, they will hold back on everybody else, but on you, it's open season. Yep, there it is. See. Now, for him, if you got him in this position again, so you've got him here, right? That's just easier. Why bend down? Because that puts you in a, in a disadvantaged position, right? Yeah. Just, and again, you can, you can kneel right on this. You can, there's your hypotenuse if you want it. All kinds of things you can do here. But again, remember, he might have friends. So. I got to remember to keep my spine. Yeah. This, we're gonna, in, in the next segment, we're going to talk about spine alignment and things. Yes. People who don't really have you know, like, uh, some Asians or black people. They have like I just really did it to him. He's Asian. Well, he's got a kind of a bigger nose. You know, some people have like real, like real. As long as you can find where the gristle and the bone meet, it'll work. Okay. Now the Asian faces. Um, uh, I don't think you have any Native American in you, do you? No. Okay. A lot of the uh, the Native American and Asian faces will have a bigger cheekbone, so they'll be more vulnerable in the cheek area than they will in the eyebrow area. Okay. Um, she's got a good nose. She'll she'll go right out. Tap on it. Don't tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as long as you can, as you can get, get those knuckles and you just give him a little tap, right? What about that nose? You should go right out too, right? You had it broken at least once, right? Huh? You were born with that crooked nose? Just born that way. way. Okay. So his bristle's right here, right? So I find this. Right? He's tall, so I have to hit. <laughs> See the difference? Why do, you, why do you do that neck tap to reverse the energy? Because it, yeah, it, 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 it wakes him up. You notice when I hit down, not so much, but when I went up, mm -hmm. he had a flash. Mm -hmm. It's because he's taller than me. Mm. 
That's why when I put Luis on the ground and hit down, he flashed. When I stood him up, it wasn't nearly as pronounced. You're saying when I'm taller than you, you go up. Mm -hmm. When I'm shorter, you yep. go down. That's one of the secrets. Is not You have to learn to, to read bodies to know where they're weak. Otherwise, the technique that worked perfectly on, you know, on one guy might not work on you because it's subtle. There are subtleties that you have to consider, and they're not in the books. Yeah. They're not in the books.